hello hello everybody and happy full moon i'm so excited um to be here right now because i feel like this full moon is like so full of energy and it's so full of progression and change and i feel like collectively everyone is ready for a change but happy full moon this is our strawberry moon this is also the first eclipse in our eclipse season so a little bit earlier this year we we're coming off of an eclipse season. Now we're starting into another eclipse season. So this is the first eclipse of three that we'll be experiencing here. June 21st is gonna be the solar eclipse. And then we will have another um, lunar eclipse on July 5th. So basically over the next month, we'll be experiencing these various eclipses. The thing to keep in mind with eclipse season and the eclipse in general with the full moon is that it magnifies the energy of the full moon. So if you kind of feel like you've been going crazy lately, it definitely has to do with the full moon, I promise you, <laughs> and this eclipse that we are having because it's magnifying everything. Our full moon is in Sagittarius. We'll go over the energy between the sun and the moon, which is one of my favorite things to look at. One of my favorite things to talk about and teach about is balance. And I feel like the sun and the moon is the epitome of balance in nature. So we'll talk about the energies of that here in just a little bit, but this full moon is in Sagittarius. Generally, you really feel the energy from the moon very intensely about two days prior. So today is the full moon. Um, and two days after. So that can be spread out a little bit more, especially if you're just now listening to this today and you're like, I wanted to be prepared. Like just know that you have time and it's not a big deal. A new path awaits us. We're entering into a, a period of rebirth. So with this eclipse season, I really feel like we are starting something completely new, something that we've not done before. And that's just the energy in general. So not necessarily individual, but as a collective, I feel like we're on a new path, like a new path is in front of us and we're all getting ready to take this journey. So the three things, there's three things that I wanted to focus on. Something new is coming and something is coming to an end. This is in everybody's life and we're being called to release. So this could be something very subtle or something very big, but the energy of this full moon is definitely bringing in and calling in, releasing, shedding the past and letting go. The full moon in general always signifies the fulfillment of whatever you were working on in the past and freshening, opening up for what is coming in the future. So searching to release deep-seated beliefs that has been coming up a lot, just things that you have in your mind that you don't necessarily have a reason why you believe them or why you hold them so tightly. It's just something that's always been there. So those types of things might be surfacing, like why do you believe that? Why do you feel that way? Why do you have that opinion? And it will boil down to the fact that it's a deep-seated belief that maybe you've picked up in your childhood or during your upbringing or whatever it might be. So those deep-seated uh, beliefs, we're ready to release those and let them go. And I feel like that energy is so perfect right now. Another thing that goes within this deep-seated beliefs and things coming to an end or we're being called to release is the emotions that come along with it. What is coming up for you? emotionally and a lot of times we want to push those emotions away whether it's anger or disappointment or whatever it might be we don't want to deal with it so what this moon this eclipse season is asking us to do is to sit with your emotions allow yourself to feel your emotions whether it's sadness anger grief it doesn't make any difference anxiety depression sit with these feelings try and understand them, see where they're coming from. Why are you experiencing this particular emotion? And the hardest thing is try not to use judgment while experiencing these emotions. Sometimes, even for myself, simply feeling sad, in my mind, with my old belief systems that are very deep-seated, it makes me feel weak. Being sad equals weakness. 
that has taken a lot of work on my part to remotely allow myself to experience these emotions, those types of emotions, and I still struggle. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you'll start to identify these deep-seated beliefs as you sit with your emotions. Acknowledge your feelings of confusion and call on the full moon and the energy of the eclipse to help you illuminate your truth, illuminate your answer. So just allow yourself to know that you're confused or you're lost. This time is very confusing collectively for a lot of people. All of these types of things that are coming up, it may be very confusing. Where do you stand? How do you feel? Do you, do you have an opinion? You know, like allow yourself to be confused but call on the energy of the moon to help you, the energy of the eclipse, to bring whatever it is that you need forwards, especially if you have no idea what it is that you need. So take comfort in knowing that we can call on the energy of the moon to help us in this time. Very, very importantly, watch for imbalances. We have so many imbalances going on right now. Um, People's opinions are flying like crazy. I feel like we need to be, especially in relationships, we need to be very careful. This full moon will definitely draw out impulsive behaviors, anger, frustration, being super impatient, which is probably one of my hardest things, is just being impatient. And a lot of self-control issues so that impulsion like comes with the self-control issues and normally 99% of the time if you impulsively do something or you are lacking self-control whatever comes out is regrettable this can lead to a lot of misunderstandings and again specifically watch in relationships but you will see this covering the entire earth right now the disputes disagreements all of these types of things coming out as anger. So, and frustration and impatience. Watch yourself and send that energy not only to yourself, but expand that energy out to those around you, your home, your neighborhood, your town, your city, and so on and so forth. Try and send that mental message out into the universe of, you know, be patient, breathe, Take your time before you speak. And this isn't necessarily the energy of outburst, but definitely watch with that interaction with other people that we're not just instantly going to anger, going to being frustrated, going to being impatient. Try and watch yourself and make sure that you don't allow that energy to sweep you away because it really will. And what are we looking for always, always, always with the full moon is balance. We, we want to feel that energy from the sun and the moon and find that balance between the two energies. In this finding balance, I will go into a little tiny bit about the sun and the moon right now. The full moon is in Sagittarius. The sun is in Gemini. Gemini generally represents our lower mind or our earthly mind. And Sagittarius represents our higher mind or our spiritual mind, if you will. So those two are already very directly opposing each other. So the energy of your higher and lower mind, we're being called to find balance there. We need that, that earthly mind. We need that physical direction in our life, but also we need that higher mind, that spiritual direction in our life at the same time. And we kind of have to pull from both of these. Gemini is a very logical so the sun is very logical thinking and it likes to be comfortable stay in its surroundings the energy of gemini is very much so about sustainment and things like that whereas on the opposite end of the spectrum for the full moon we have sag is very broad thinking and very adventurous they venture outside of the box is what always comes to mind whenever i'm working with sagittarius very outside of the box if you know anyone that is a sagittarius you will definitely understand that immediately because they're just outside of the box type of people they definitely have a mentality that is not generally everyone else's so 
think about that, that duality that we have always present, always present is we're finding comfort in our surroundings, but then we're also stepping outside of the comfort zone. We're also evaluating things and all this information that we've already went over about sitting with your emotions, kind of sifting through those deep seated beliefs and allowing yourself to release really this duality is going to help you do that because we need to see where we've been comfortable, where we want to stay comfortable, but we also need to see the path that we can grow and move forwards and expand into something that maybe we would have never entertained before. So between the sun and the moon, if we can find that balance and not sway too far from one side or the other, it will just help propel us through this eclipse season and come out the other side with a whole new look on life, a whole fresh and open mind. So it's really, really great that this is the first step that we're taking during this eclipse season. Evaluate your needs, evaluate your desires. And again, I feel like a broken record sometimes because I say this over and over. Are you insufficient somewhere? Are you lacking something in your life even with this relationship focus here because venus is in retrograde which i won't go into that but if you wanted to look into that at all venus is in retrograde and so the relationship energy is very strong evaluate your needs are they being met is there something new that you need something different what is your desire what is your desire in your relationship with yourself what is your desire in your relationship with maybe a, a partner or a significant other, with your children, with your mother or father? Is there something that you are lacking or that you desire that is not being met in your life? Give yourself this opportunity and use the energy of the moon to really connect into that. Is there an emptiness? Does there feel like there's a hole you know, somewhere, something is lacking, something's not balanced, something's not right. Really always come back to your needs and your desires. Give yourself positive action steps. So as we move forwards, using those positive action steps in your life, again, is going to propel us through this season, the eclipse season, and it will really help us gain traction in the direction that we want to take our lives in. So positive, actionable steps. And remember, anything that comes up, any little messages that you receive, especially in the form of emotion, these are tiny internal wisdom, little messages of wisdom, internal wisdom that's coming out for you to listen to. Your emotions, are messages from within your subconscious mind trying to get your attention to listen and to look a little deeper. So again, calling on the energy of this full moon, our first part of our three, our series of three eclipse. So this is an eclipse season. Utilize this, utilize the energy. And as always, Set your jar of water outside if you want to make your full moon water that you can really absorb the energy of this full moon, this eclipse. Charge your crystals, put them out on the windowsills or outside, and light your candles. The energy of the flame always really increases whatever your intentions are that you're setting. Go within and find your truth. Give your inner voice the spotlight from the light of the moon and allow your truth to be heard. I love to celebrate the energy of the moon and, and incorporate it into my life as much as possible. I hope that everybody enjoys your full moon process and your first step in the eclipse season here. And if you have any questions, reach out to me. I love answering questions. So please reach out to me and I will see you all in the next video. Happy full moon.